Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, seventh grade math, section 2.4, multiplying and dividing rational numbers lesson. Pause while you write the section number and title in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is students will learn the rules for multiplying and dividing rational numbers. Copy the following key idea into your math notebook. Today's key idea is Multiplying and dividing rational numbers. To multiply or divide rational numbers, use the same rules for signs as you used for integers. So if you have a negative times a positive, you will end up with a negative number. If, and that goes for multiplying and dividing. Be sure you copy this example in your notebook as well. Let's take a look at example one, dividing rational numbers. We are finding the value of negative five and one-fifth divided by two and one-third. So our first job is to estimate, so we're going to do a little rounding, negative five divided by two equals negative two and one-half. So we're going to then go back to our original problem and write the mixed numbers as improper fractions and we come up with negative 26 fifths divided by 7 thirds and then we remember our rule of keep change flip and we have negative 26 fifths times 3 sevenths and so that means we're multiplying by the reciprocal of 7 thirds and we multiply the numerators and the denominators and that gives us negative 78 35ths and we simplify that and it comes out to negative 2 and 8 35ths. So we had a negative divided by a positive and that gave us a negative and we look to see if it's close to our estimate, and it is. Moving on to example number two, we're going to multiply rational numbers, negative 2.5 times 3.6. The decimals have different signs, so we multiply as we would normally, and we have, and then we add up here, we have one 150 plus 750 equals 900, and we put in our decimal point there, and it comes out to negative 9. So the product is negative because we have a negative times a positive. So the product is negative 9. Example 3, multiplying more than two rational numbers. So it says, if we skip down here, you can use properties of multiplication to make the product easier to find. So what they have done is they've just grouped two of these together. So we have negative one-seventh times, and then they put in parentheses or brackets, four-fifths times negative seven. An easy thing to remember is if you count up the negative signs in your problem, if you have an odd number of negative signs, your answer is going to be negative. If you have an even number, your answer is going to be positive. So, and that is when you're multiplying and divide only. So let's take a look at our problem here. We do what's in the brackets first, so we are multiplying negative 7 times 4 fifths in the original problem and then they use the associative property of multiplication to make it easier so that we would be first of all multiplying these two together so negative one-seventh times negative seven is easier to multiply together because that gives us a positive one. 
and when you and then you have a positive one times four fifths gives us four fifths so we're using our multiplication property of one there and the product is four fifths so if you look back up to what I inserted into the lesson here if you count up your negative signs you had two negative signs that was an even number and you got a positive product now we're going to work on the on your own problems be sure you write these in your notebook and follow along carefully number one we have two negative signs so we know we're going to end up with a positive answer so it's negative six-fifths divided by negative one-half and we're going to keep the first fraction, change the sign, and flip the second fraction. Always check to see if you can cross cancel. You cannot in this case. So negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12. And that goes over 5. And it simplifies to 2 and 2 fifths. Number two, one-third divided by negative two and two-thirds. So we want to rewrite this with the negative two and two-thirds as a mixed number. So one-third divided by two times three is six plus two is eight. So that would be a negative eight-thirds. And then we keep change flip, so one third times negative three eighths. So we can cross cancel. Three goes into itself once and once and that equals one times negative one is negative one and one times eight is eight so it's negative one eighth. Number three again we're going to end up with a negative answer. 8 times negative 5.1. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. Magic 0. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9. Add. 8 plus 0 is 8. 1 plus 0 is 1. And then we have the 9. And we march our decimal point over two places. And don't forget to put our negative sign. So we end up with 9.18. I'm going to erase. You need to be sure everything is in your notebook. Moving on to number 6, we have negative 6.3 times negative 0 0.6. So 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 6 is 36. Plus 1 is 37. We don't need to multiply the zeros. We do need to remember that it's going to be positive because they're both negative. And we need to march our decimal point over two places to the left, so that leaves us with a positive 3.78. And then we'll move on to number five. And we can multiply these in any order. So I am going to multiply negative two-thirds times three halves because I see that they're reciprocals of each other. So I think something good might happen there. So negative two-thirds times three halves. Negative two times three equals, actually let's cross cancel. Those two equal one and those two equal one. So I end up with a negative 1 because 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so it's a negative 1. And so I've got negative 1 times 7 and 7 eighths. So that equals a negative 7 and 7 eighths. And then we'll move on to number 6. And I'm going to do these in a funky order too because I can see what's going to happen here is all I have to do is move my decimal point around. 
So I have two negatives here. I have negative 7.2 times negative 100. And I know that when I multiply by 100, all I have to do is move my decimal point two places to the right. And I know that it's going to be positive because I have two negative signs. So my 7.2 becomes a 720. And then I can look at my multiplying by 0 0.1, and I know that when I multiply by 0 0.1, all I have to do is move my decimal point one place to the left. So I'm just going to do that with my decimal point, and that's going to turn out to be 72. Moving on to example four, our real life application. An investor owns stocks A, B, and C. What is the mean, so the average change in the value of stocks? So we add up all of the changes, and we get negative 333.63. We divide that by three, because there were three of them, one, two, three, and that turns out to be negative 111.21. So the mean change in the value of the stocks was negative 121.21. So looking at the on your own problem, it says what if the change in the value of stock D is 568.23? So what is the value of the mean change in the value of the four stocks. So we're adding a stock and the mean and we need to find the mean change. So before our changes were minus 180.39 and my plus 127.28 minus 280.52 and we know from our example that those added up to negative 333.63 so now we need to add our fourth stock which is a positive 568 point two three. So let's do that. So we need to remember the rules for adding and subtracting integers. So we subtract five sixty eight point twenty three minus three 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 point six three. So three minus three is zero. Borrow 12 minus 6 is 6, 7 minus 3 is 4, 6 minus 3 is 3, 5 minus 3 is 2. So we have 234.60, and now we're going to divide that by 4. So it's negative 234.60 divided by 4, because now we have 4 stocks. So 4 goes into 23. 5 times, that's 20, and there's a 3, and we bring that down. 4 goes into 34, eight times, which is 32, and there's a 2, and a 6. 4 times 6 is 24, and there's a 2 and a 0. And 4 times 5 is 20. And I'm running out of room, but there's a 0. So our mean change is $58.65. Please remember that to complete this flipped lesson, you need to be prepared with your notes, vocabulary, and other work from the flipped lesson completed. Also, you need to be prepared with any questions you have for your teacher and, of course, a good attitude.